on June 6, 2024, we've got one of the most pivotal new moons in Gemini that I've ever seen. That happens at 8.38 a.m. Eastern U.S. time, so calculate that for your own time zone. And wow, uh, originally I wasn't even going to make a video on this one, but the more I looked at it, the more I thought, holy smokes, this stove is hot and people need some kind of a heads up. So that's what this video is. We're going to start with the good news. That is that Venus, the goddess of love, very tightly conjuncts this new moon in Gemini. They're all in 16 plus degrees of Gemini, just minutes apart. That is going to bring a little bit of grace here. It's going to bring some nice creativity, but don't get too comfy with that because we've got a tight square from Saturn in Pisces. Saturn is the mature thinker, the lord of karma, the troubleshooter, also the guy that can kind of rain on your parade. We've got Jupiter in Gemini, the sign of the new moon. Jupiter's full of optimism, also oftentimes a bit overconfident. When we've got Saturn squaring the new moon in Gemini, that kind of brings a note of caution to all the hustle bustle that we normally associate with Gemini. If this new moon were a song, it would be very Elvis Presley. So wise men like Saturn in Pisces or the Hermit card say, only fools rush in, right? The Gemini fool rushing in. But Venus conjunct the new moon in Gemini says, oh, but I just can't help falling in love with you. So we have that energy, that tension of the realism of Saturn and kind of that happy-go-lucky, buoyancy, love energy of this new moon conjunct Venus in Gemini. But the Sabian symbol adds to the Saturn end of the mix. The Sabian symbol is, we always round up, right? So 17 Gemini. The head of a robust youth changes into that of a mature thinker. So again, the mature thinker in this equation is Saturn in Pisces or the Hermit card. And so we really want to pay a little more extra attention to those warnings that come through. Gemini is ruled by Mercury. Mercury is also known as the messenger. There's going to be a lot of information coming out in the next month. Things are probably going to look quite different by the time we roll around to the new moon in Cancer. So lots of information happening and uh, speedy information that changes our worldview. That's that Jupiter in Gemini energy. The other thing to keep in mind is not only people who have lots of placements in Gemini, Sagittarius, Virgo, Pisces, but also countries like the United States that have a lot of Gemini placements are going to be majorly, majorly impacted by this. I'm going to get into some of the potential geopolitical things that we may see. I'm going to do that in a little bit, but I want to cover more of the personal energies first because there are some big ones to keep in mind. So I already talked about the Sabian symbol and Saturn, but we've got another kind of ending, sobering kind of uh, energy, and that is Black Moon Lilith is conjunct the South Node, so past karma, Black Moon Lilith conjunct the South Node in Libra. Now, Black Moon Lilith is oftentimes very reactive. In Libra especially, she has a real fear of abandonment because Black Moon Lilith likes her relationships, but she cannot afford to remain stuck in relationships if they are going to tie her down, if they're going to involve codependent behaviors, if they are going to keep her from being able to be herself. And so some of the questions to keep in mind at the time of this new moon, in which ways do you censor yourself in order to maintain stability? Which parts of you scream, that's Black Moon Lilith, for acknowledgement? Where do you need to break free from codependence? Which parts of you have remained repressed or suppressed for long enough? With that south note, it's like endings, we're done, right? It's, it's over. And also, how might maturation 
empower your inner Lilith. So, you know, Lilith can also be the wise woman energy. She can be like that crone energy, that magical fairy godmother energy when we listen to her. But when we don't listen to her, then she can be, you know, the ugly old hag who curses you and like destroys your life. So you want to get this one right. You want to really pay attention to some of those questions. What's coming up in relationships for you? Now, we've also got our old friend Therius, and I've mentioned Therius numerous times before because he's been kind of, he moves slowly, he's a centaur, and he kind of just has been like lurking in the background of a lot of our new moons and full moons, especially over the past year. So Therius is at 19 Virgo. That means that there's a T-square, right? T-square with Saturn and Pisces, Therius and Virgo, and the uh, new moon in Gemini and Venus. And so in layman's terms, what does that mean? Well, Therius is waiting in the wings. He's like Stalin, you know, after Lenin died, Stalin was ready to assume the mantle. So there is this energy of somebody waiting in the wings, something lurking, some kind of change, but that can also bring a sort of confidence in the sense that you don't have to compromise your inner Lilith. You don't have to rush in like the fool because you're not desperate. You you don't have to be so worried that, oh my gosh, if I, if I don't do this stuff right now, then I'll never get another chance. You will get other chances, but you want to get this one right. And so again, that's why I'm making the video. In terms of kind of larger collective potential with this, this particular new moon is kind of what I would call sandwich sextiled. So a sextile is 60 degree aspect. We've got both the North Node and Chiron in Aries. Chiron is past the point of the new moon in Gemini and the North Node in Aries is back at 13 of Aries, but uh, they kind of like sandwich sextile the new moon in Gemini. What that does is it, it brings an energy of healing. It brings that potential. So again, when you're looking at this maturation process, you're looking at also a potential for healing. For some reason, I always find that sextiles from Chiron are actually kind of more intense than a lot of other aspects with Chiron. And it's almost like the healing sneaks into the back door. So again, sort of like that theorious energy, it's like who's waiting there in the back door? There, there are changes that are afoot, but Gemini is also the sign of the trickster. And so again, listen to what's coming through, pay attention to information. With Jupiter in Gemini, we can have the potential for a lot more truth to come through, but we're going to have to sift through because Jupiter can also amplify those trickster energies. So I mentioned earlier about the United States having a lot of placements in Gemini. I'm going to put up this chart here and just look at this cluster that we have going on, right? <laughs> We've got the stellium of Jupiter, Mercury, Venus, Sun, and Moon all in Gemini. But then we've got the U.S. natal Uranus at 8 degrees Gemini. We've got the U.S. natal descendant at 12 degrees Gemini. Of course, the descendant is the cusp of the house of relationships, but also the cusp of the house of known enemies. So uh, the U.S. is very sensitive to when things cross over that uh, 12 Gemini point. It could increase issues as far as wars or uh, at least the rhetoric of war. Then, right around the point of the new moon conjunct Venus, we've got Donald Trump's natal Uranus at 17 Gemini. And then we've got Donald Trump's north node at 20 degrees Gemini, Donald Trump's natal sun at 21 degrees Gemini, and the U.S. natal Mars also at 21 degrees Gemini. So, uh, yeah, lots of stuff brewing. Who knows exactly how all of this is going to play out because 
again, we have that trickster energy. And with so much happening in Gemini, the information is going to come fast. It's it's going to be all over the place. And we're somewhere in that mix. There will be truth, but there is likely also to be an awful lot of distraction because that's very Gemini too. So again, don't be a fool, right? Like wait for the information to come through before you completely bet the farm on whatever you hear on the news or whatever you hear on social media, which is also very uh, Gemini. That trickster energy is up. I can't emphasize that enough, how important it is. Also, in terms of the geopolitical implications. So uh, when Jupiter stations retrograde in late October, I believe it's October 9th, Jupiter stations retrograde right around 20 degrees of Gemini. So that point that I'm highlighting, which is very close to this new moon, but it's also like smack dab there on Donald Trump's natal sun and his north node, as well as the US natal Mars, you know, you want to talk about an October surprise, it's likely to be much bigger than usual. So uh, yeah, lots of opportunities here in terms of love and relationships. And relationships don't have to always mean romantic relationships. They could mean relationships of any sort, as well as you know, partnerships happening, business partnerships, deals, you know, wheeling, dealing, all of that kind of energy. But just kind of a heads up, if you've been feeling like, wow, we are living in monumental times, uh, yeah, the astrology really underscores that. And Jupiter in Gemini is like, yeah, hello, big, big. And Saturn squaring from Pisces is like, yeah, watch your step here because uh, things may not always be what they seem. And it's going to take us a little while to sort out what's what and who's who. So again, if you've got placements in Gemini, Sagittarius, Virgo, Pisces, this is going to be much more impactful for you especially because with that stellium in Gemini, we've got stuff coming and going. I mean, there's there's so many things popping off and with the United States having all those key placements in Gemini with uh, both Donald Trump's Uranus and Gemini so close to this new moon as well as the US natal Uranus within orb of this new moon, we're talking about some surprises. We're talking about some unexpected developments. And that can be personal, but even if you don't have things in the mutable signs, uh, just, you know, the U.S. impacts a lot of things worldwide. And also, if you're an American, uh, you're likely to be more impacted by this new moon in Gemini way more than usual. So uh, I hope this helps people to kind of prepare. It could be very nice with that Venus energy. Just kind of watch your step. You know, we're, we're walking very quickly and not everything is as it seems. So trickster energy is sometimes very powerful. Sometimes the trickster, like the coyote, uh, brings this empowerment, this like turning the world upside down. And with that upside down perspective, we find a deeper truth or we find that the trickster was really what we thought was reality. And in fact, the trickster that upended everything liberates us in order to benefit from the changes. But uh, hats off to everybody that is on this wild ride, right? Mr. Toad's wild ride continues. And I, I wish you all the very, very best. And uh, I will see you soon. Peace.